Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Fire has destroyed an LPG conversion factory in the Bundaberg suburb of Norville this morning. As the fire took hold, a series of explosions prompted a police emergency and nearby businesses had to be evacuated. When fire crews arrived at the LPG conversion factory in suburban Bundaberg, there were fears the blaze was at a dangerous stage. We had multiple explosions uh, inside the building, gas cylinders uh, in the uh, gas fitting business. Emergency services evacuated nearby businesses as they feared more gas cylinders inside the building could detonate. An emergency situation was declared. A significant concern was a large storage of LP gas in adjoining premises. The fire quickly spread to a tyre business next door. Demolition crews had to knock down the front wall of the building to stop the fire taking hold in the stored tyres. Four fire crews eventually brought the blaze under control, but the building was extensively damaged. No one was injured and all the factory workers were accounted for. Stanley Yusinov, QUT News. A new study by scientists at Queensland's Department of the Environment has found toxic farm chemicals are contaminating the Great Barrier Reef at alarming rates. The scientists say the chemical duron is at toxic levels on the reef. It's a weed controlling chemical commonly used in sugarcane and cotton plantations. Environmentalists are claiming it's polluting Queensland waters at levels 50 times higher than what is deemed safe by national standards. The worst readings were recorded at a popular fishing spot about 50 kilometres south of Townsville, but other farm chemicals were also found at 11 other sites. The old ads used to say Foster's is Australian for beer, but that's no longer the case. British-based group Sab Miller has bought the Australian giant for around $10 billion. The brewing company that makes some of Australia's most iconic beers will fall into foreign hands as ownership of Foster's is sold overseas. After four months of negotiations with SAB Miller, Foster's Group received an offer they couldn't turn down. You know, ultimately this is a great deal for the company and frankly a great deal for the staff and our customers. Beer experts say that while the taste of the products won't change, Australians should expect to see more international brands available in bars. I think you'll really notice a lot of uh, change in the emphasis that's given to certain brands and also how available some of the brands are. Many people are concerned that the change of ownership will mean job losses around Australia. Hobart's Cascade Brewery may be closed down, with SAB Miller likely to distribute their products from one of the existing factories. SAB Miller has recently built a very big brewery in Australia um, that they've been brewing their international brands out of, and that may see the closure of some of the smaller Foster's own breweries, and Cascade might be one to go. Foster's group has rejected those claims. And you can't really move a brewery, you know, making VB anywhere else. So I think we'll continue to see heavy investment in our business in Australia. Fosters say SAB Miller CEO Graham Mackay will look after Australians. He believes, as, in, as I do, in the future of this business and in the people and the importance of this business to Australia. So I believe we have their commitment to do, to do what's right. But the Fosters Group isn't the first to be sold overseas. Lion Nathan, distributor of popular Queensland brand Forex, is owned by Tokyo-based Kieran Holdings. They still employ around 8,000 people across Australia and New Zealand, with factories in every Australian state. There's an explosion of small and regional breweries that are making really good beer, um, and hopefully this will give uh, them, people start looking at them a little bit more. Experts say the Foster's sale may be good news for small local brewers, who stand to attract more attention from Aussie buyers. Ella Archibald Binge, QUT News. The Australian Small Business Group is lobbying the federal government to abolish the fringe benefits tax from business meals and once again make them tax deductible. The tax was brought in by the Keating government in 1987 to stop exorbitant tax claims, but the small business groups say the tax should be dropped to give a much needed boost to struggling restaurants and cafes. It's a common saying that there's no such thing as a free lunch. But restaurant and cafe owners are pushing to again make business lunches not quite free, but at least tax deductible. They're part of a push to abolish the fringe benefits tax, which they say would lure the customers back. Get those pumps on seats. <laughs> yeah, definitely bring any, anything that we can do to try to get the people to um, spend money. The consumer is scared at the moment. According to Ms Sotaru, there are also broader economic benefits. I really believe that business people can do better business in our cafes and in our restaurants. 
So if they can do better business in our restaurants, then that means that we can help the suppliers and help employees and keep people off the streets. Any change to the taxation would have to be carefully reviewed to avoid the rorting of meal expenses that originally led to the system being scrapped. Perhaps there needs to be a dollar value cap put on um, the claims, but I think we at least need to be having the discussion. Removing the fringe benefit tax from business meals will obviously be a huge boost for a lot of restaurants and cafes with a large corporate based clientele. Unfortunately, some small businesses and consumers won't see the same benefits. We need to have a real good look at this and make sure that it's done properly and right across the board, not just for larger corporations and businesses. I need it right down to the blue collar worker. But for now, every cent of every lunch will have to be paid for in full. Lincoln Humphreys, QUT News. A Brisbane company has developed a crisis response system that has already sparked the interest of one US defence contractor. The phone-based system, dubbed SpaceGuard, identifies when subscribers are in trouble and automatically activates a pre-arranged response. This is what happens at Indigo Telecom headquarters in Brisbane when a SpaceGuard subscriber is in trouble anywhere around the world. Hi, it's Ryan calling from Indigo Telecom. You have just activated The automated response system can track up to 100,000 people with the capacity to expand and track millions. In a crisis, it can be activated manually or when a subscriber ventures outside a designated electronic area called a geofence. It's an automated uh, crisis response management service uh, that uses a, an incredible tracking technology to provide the underlying connectivity that allows us to track people and respond to uh, particular alerts and alarms raised by those individuals wherever they be in the world. The company says the system would be useful for media organisations and others who have to operate in disaster and conflict zones. We have a prime contractor, a prime defence contractor in the United States who's taken the service on board. Uh, they have around about 150,000 personnel scattered around the world and they're going to be using this with their own people. Although it has the capacity, Indigo Telecom has no short-term intentions of expanding to the market of mums and dads. So parents wanting to keep track of their kids will just have to wait. But the service to parents may become available in the future. Georgie Chumley, QUT News. A QUT study has found reading to children for 20 minutes a day can significantly improve their literacy and numeracy skills at school. But this is not the only thing it can improve. What are these? It has long been considered important to read to children, but this new study highlights just why. Reading to a child prior to formal schooling increases his or her intelligence. But it also fosters relationships and other crucial life skills, according to QUT's Dr Susan Walker. I think that the sitting with the parent for, for a little period of time, engaging with the book, is building those skills that children need to be able to engage with schoolwork later on. Parents are not the only ones who should read to children. Dr Walker says other family members and teachers are encouraged to do the same. We have story time every day. Um, yeah, I think an early childhood program without story time would be missing something very important. The storytelling program doesn't only have educational benefits for children, it helps teachers too. It's really lovely seeing when they're really engaged in a book and, and, and getting involved in the book and, and we read it several times so that they know it and they can read along with it as well. It's, it's a lovely feeling, yeah. At most daycare centres, reading isn't a formal requirement, but it's encouraged. And centres don't limit the types of reading that children do here. We read lots of different sorts of texts. We create our own books, we read things on the internet, um, we research on the internet, um, we in things like newspapers and magazines sometimes, a whole range of things, read signs, everything like that. Dr Walker says there's no such thing as too much reading. Madeline Gooley, QUT News. The RSPCA is calling for Queenslanders to become wildlife heroes to help the organisation rescue sick, injured and orphaned native animals. Wildlife heroes will be the first point of contact when an animal is reported to be in distress. This baby brush tail possum met his wildlife hero after he was found behind a hot water system clinging to his dead mother. The possum was dehydrated and malnourished and will remain at the Fairfield RSPCA shelter for a week before going to a wildlife carer for rehabilitation. The RSPCA is hoping more people will register to become wildlife heroes so more native animals can be rescued and released. 
the moment we've got approximately 400 wildlife heroes statewide. The majority of those are in southeast Queensland. Um, that would, would really like to double that within the next 12 months. Wildlife heroes don't need any special knowledge or qualifications. They just need a love for animals and be willing to help out whenever they can. Animal lovers can register online with the RSPCA. When an animal is phoned into our call centre, uh, we can do a search um, for suburban species and we contact the person most suited to do the rescue. Often the animals will have already been put in a box by the finder and simply need to be transported to a qualified rehabilitator, vet or RSPCA shelter. Sue Jackson has been a wildlife hero for around a year and has been called out to some interesting jobs. When I got there, there was a lady had called in. She heard the, the possums in the bin and somebody had obviously thrown them in there, put the lid down. This wildlife hero recommends people get involved in what she says is a worthy cause. Well, I think more people should get involved and be a little bit more tolerant of the wildlife that we do have in the suburbs. People who find sick, injured or orphaned animals can contact the RSPCA all hours of the day by calling 1300 Animal. Gemma Bowes, QUT News. Good evening. Time to take a look at the weather. Looking at the sky cam, we can see that those clouds this morning were well and truly gone by about 2 o'clock, leaving us with clear blue skies this afternoon. The satellite picture shows that low still moving across the bight, most of the cloud curving around the coastline, but still bringing some showers to Tasmania tomorrow. Around the country tomorrow, and it'll be a cool day in Melbourne with a top of 17, with some possible showers. While further north in Darwin, it'll be much warmer with a top of 35. At home in Queensland tomorrow, there's a lot of cloud around for most cities, except for Brisbane, who can expect another fine day with a top of 26. There's a chance of rain in Townsville and a warm day in Mount Isa with a top of 35. The Gold Coast can expect a fine day tomorrow with a top of 26, with wind swinging north northeasterly for most of the day, and seas reaching 1.2 metres. And up at the Sunshine Coast, it will be slightly cooler and winds gusting to 20 knots in the evening. The outlook for, the outlook for Brisbane over the weekend, we're still expecting showers and a possible storm on Sunday, but fine tomorrow and Saturday. And that's the weather this Thursday. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.